Hello everyone, it's Helen here and thank you for joining me today. Now today we're going to be making this Ferrero Rocher box. It's a tray that slips out of an acetate covering and it's going with a lovely pink and um, black theme there with the stripes. I absolutely love that look. And we're also going to be using um, some gold heat embossing and some water colouring. Now I'll quickly show you the box that these Ferrero Rochers came in. It's quite nice but I think I prefer my one. Okay, so you're going to be needing a piece of acetate sheet. I'll give you the measurements for those in a minute. Some black cardstock, so I've got one for the tray and one we're going to be doing some die cutting on that one. And so I've got some watercolour paper here. Um, if you have Stampin' Up! Shimmery White, that would work as well because we're going to be doing some watercolouring. And a piece of Whisper White cardstock. Um, it has extra smooth surface there so that when we do our stamping for the stripes as well. So I'll show you the stamp sets. We're going to be using my all-time favourite, which is Birthday Blooms and a diagonal stripe as well. Okay, so we're going to start off with our scoring first. Okay, we're going to take our cardstock that measures eight and a half by three and a half, grab our stylus, and we're going to score at one inch on all four sides. So that's the tray scoring done. We're now going to score our acetate and this one measures six and a half by six. Six inches needs to be here and the six and a half needs to be down this side there. I was just making sure I did not get confused. I've scored many a time in the wrong place. I'm sure you've all done that too. Um, okay, so we're going to score at one inch. Now you can score on the acetate, you just need to press quite hard and go over it a couple of times. So we score at one inch and then at the five inches. Okay, that's that one done. And then we're going to score this one after we've done our stamping. So we will have to get the scoreboard out again. Okay, so now we're going to fold we're going to fold in the direction that we actually scored it in. So normally I would fold it the other way, um, but in this case I'm going to go with the score line. And to get that started off, you just need to find the fold where it is and then press it gently at first, just so that it kind of gets the idea of what it's supposed to be doing. So now it's done that, we can then grab our bone folder and then score along there. Okay, we do the same on the other side. It's sorry if it's really hard to see. This is see-through, so it kind of looks like I'm playing with something invisible. Actually, it's picking up quite well on camera, but to the naked eye, it does actually look like I'm playing with nothing. Okay, so then we get the bone folder again. And press that down. Okay, so that's our top bit done so let's make our box crease all the corners down this is uh, stamping up black I do like the stamping up black cardstock it's a very black black um, I do have other brands of black I'll quickly show you there you go you can see the difference this one's not as black it's just a different shade so yeah I do like the stamping up black Okay, so that's all creased off. Now we're going to cut into our sections there. I'm actually cutting off completely the score line. So it's, when I pull that off, the score line is in within that little piece there. So repeat that on all sections. Just trimming off the other end as well so our box goes together quite nicely. So there'll be no pieces sticking over the top when we assemble it together. Okay, so I'm going to be using Fast Fuse. Okay, 
you can see I'm going quite close to the uh, score line but not actually on the score line. Oops. There we go. Okay, so let's get this put together. Okay, so that's our tray made. Now moving on to our image now. So we grab that out and then we're using this one. The other flower is really pretty, but it's just too um too big for this box. Okay, so you're gonna need some Versamark here and some gold heat embossing powder and your embossing buddy which is an anti-static powder <clears throat> now I keep um, a disposable spoon here just for Getting my powder on. Don't worry about that little section there if you do get any extra bits because we're going to be trimming it out. Okay, so I'm going to put you guys on pause for a second while I heat my tool up and I'll be back in one moment. Okay, I'm all preheated. So you can use your aqua painters for this, but I'm going to use a paintbrush and I'm going to be using Melon Mambo and Garden Green. And I've also got some water there. I've already used it for my previous project, so that's why it's pink. So what you do is you just press this down. I'm sure you've seen me do this before. You press that down into the lid to get your palette going. And then you just pick up the water. So I'm keeping my lighter shade towards this side and I'm going to keep this side dry um, because then I can pick up some darker shades. And also, just to make things easier on this image, they've added some lines where the um, natural shading is going to be. I'm just going to colour the complete flower in and then I'm going to add my darker sections while the... Um, paint is still wet. I'm just going to add the darker bits here. And also towards the centre of the flower here I'm, I'm thinking there's going to be some more darker sections there. Okay so that's the pink done. Moving on to garden green. You can also use your blender pens for this as well if you'd like a little bit more control. Okay, so I'm going to take some of the darker sections now and just add it in parts of the leaves and then on the stem as well. While it's still wet you can drop it in places and it will spread out naturally. Okay, so now I'm going to wait for that to dry. I may just get my heat tool out again just to dry that off and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my snips and I'm going to cut the whole flower out and I'm going to leave a white border around the, um, the edge as well so join me in a moment and I'll be back. Okay so that's all cut out that's got the white border around the edge so we're almost there now and now we just need to print our black and white piece of paper so I'm just going to move my water out of the way because I don't want to spill that. I'm just going to lay that down there and I'm going to use my new favourite black ink which is Versafine Onyx Black. So we 
we just we don't need to cover the whole thing just enough for where we're going to press our piece of paper down so this um black ink is actually a pigment ink it's not um it has no alcohol in it i don't believe um and it gives really good coverage especially if we're going to be doing things like backgrounds and just gives a really good crisp image there okay so grab our piece of card this one measures six inches by two and we're just going to lay that on the top there grab a scrap piece of paper and then press down and rub and lift that up and lift that side up and then don't worry about this it doesn't have to look perfect if you do want it to look perfect just do it again just make sure you press down on the edges and then you can clean that off as you normally do I'll just um, attack it with a baby wipe and now I'm just going to quickly grab my heat tool again just to um, get that to dry because it's a pigment ink it will take a little bit longer to dry than the archival stuff and grab my scoreboard again and then we're going to score this at one inch and five inches so it's the same score lines as the piece of acetate that we did should fit perfectly on top of there so the acetate is very static so you probably find bits bits of fluff and dust stick to it so right, I'm going to use fast fuse again to get these sections together oh I need a base piece I'll be right back okay so I've quickly cut myself a piece I knew I'd forgotten something so this one measures six by one and a half sorry six and a half by one and a half and it completely is the same size as the bottom of your box so that's what we're going to be sticking this to so on the inside just take your fast fuse or another tape runner that is incredibly strong um, I haven't tried wet glue on this, so if you do experiment, let me know how it goes. So just line it up into the, the crease there, and then try not to let it slip. And then press that up, just like so. That's our first section done, and now we do the same on the other side. It's a little bit more fiddly, because sometimes it might stick to where you don't want it to stick. Uh, just try your best. I'm sure with a bit more practice you can get this down. I'm just going to line up that edge there. There we go. And now we can add this one on. So exactly the same. A bit of fast fuse on each side. Try and get the middle. And then line up, oops, I don't want that sticking, don't worry, it's going to be covered. Let's try again. There we go. Don't beat yourself up if it's not lined up perfectly. And then just get that pressed down. <clears throat> Okay, so there we have our sleeve or tube or whatever you want to call it. And unfortunately, I don't have ten for our rochets. And no, I didn't eat them. I only bought five. So we'll just put that aside. We'll pretend that that's that one. And then there is a special technique to getting this in. You kind of have to squash this down slightly just to get that in there. Uh, 
there we go and that slips in perfectly just like that okay so now we just need to make i mean that looks nice just like that without the sentiment um yeah i quite like that but i'm, I'm going to show you how to do the sentiment Sticking with the same stamp set, we're going with Birthday Blooms again, and we're going to be using For You. Uh, I wish they'd do one that says For Me. I like Frere Rocher's. And grab that on there. Um, I may have to use some funny tricks because I put the sticker on that one. Where's my piece of paper? So I've got another piece of wisp white here and I'm going to try and use this stamp without it being backed onto my block using the Versafine as well. Yay! I think that worked. Okay, I'm now going to quickly... Give that a quick blast again. That's not necessary, you can leave that to air dry, it doesn't take ages. And grab your big shot. Try not to knock everything off the table. I have got my magnetic platform down. And I'll be using the oval dies from Tonic Studios. Now these come with a scalloped edge as well. It's called Mixed Scalloped Edge and Straight Edge. And everything will be on my blog. So don't worry, there'll be a link down below to go there. The complete listing will be on there. Okay, so I'm going to use this one. Just to cut that out. And I've got a piece of black cardstock as well and I'm going to take the next one up to cut that one out so just line those up how you want Grab your adhesive. I have smudged that slightly, but never mind. And grab your flower. And I'm going to stick that on just like that. I'm going to use a bit of Tombow for that one. I'm trying to remember where to put the glue. Um, I said like that, so it's going to go on this leaf here. The amount of times I've put it on the wrong leaf. Okay, so it is slightly different to this one. And then we're going to add some more Tombow here. Just along there. And then add that onto the top. And there we go. That's my Ferrero Rocher project for today. And if you'd like to join me for my next video, I will be making a matching birthday card with the same theme going there. So um, if you don't want to miss that one, please subscribe down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Um, I really do enjoy the Ferrero Rocher um, videos. And if you would like some more, leave me a comment down below and then I'll get busy get, um, designing those for you. Okay, so thank you for joining me today and I'll see you next time.